Hi, this is David Anderson from Soilwork and the Night Fight Orchestra, and you're listening to the Progcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Progcast. Today, calling from Sweden, I believe, is uh, David from Soywork and the Night Flight Orchestra. Hi, David. Great to have you here on the podcast. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, let's start right with the big Soywork news as this episode is going to drop um, if everything goes to plan on December 3rd, one day later. There's going to be a big release for soil work it's not going to be an album but it's a nevertheless a super epic affair it's an ep um and four of the songs are already out as singles um but there's a a, a fifth song on there that's a bit different from what soil work did uh, so far uh so maybe you you could tell us a little bit uh about a wisp of the atlantic the title track of the new ep <clears throat> yeah it's it's um it's a 16 minute minute uh epic uh which uh it has lots of progressive elements to it but still uh to me it's still quite catchy at least parts of it, and, and um, it's it's uh, probably most um, ambitious and pretentious song to date, and it's something that I mean, I wrote all the music and the lyrics for all the songs on the EP, and, and especially "A Wisp of the Atlantic" is something that I've been wanting to do with soil work for a long time um, to create a, a, a real epic thing that sort of like combines a lot of um influences that you wouldn't will normally like associate with soil work and, and it's it's uh, uh i've always had a very diverse taste in music and li listening to lots of you know um jazz fusion prog um and metal and, and you know uh, all kinds of just um to me, as I, as I grow older, there's I don't think about music and genres anymore. I just think of it as music, and and um, and I guess this song is just a tiny bit of you know the noise that's going on in my head in a in a more um, structured way, um, and I'm really happy that we got to do it, and I'm really pleased with. How it came out. So I just hope that uh, <laughs> we won't scare people away <laughs> with this share length of it. I guess the listeners to this um, podcast are a bit more used to that type of um, that uh, you know those kind of songs. Yeah, I guess so too. Uh, <laughs> um, so, what what did your bandmates uh, say when you when you came up with the idea and presented it to them? They were actually really enthusiastic as well. I mean, we we um, with our our new drummer Bastian, um, who, who joined us before. Our last album, Back Yet, then um, we have a really nice, uh, you know, creative atmosphere in the band, and um, everyone's really up for trying out new stuff. And, and uh, they all thought it was a great, fun idea. And, and I mean, uh, with the state of the world right now, um, our um, our main goal has just been to keep being creative and, and um, you know, record stuff and, and, you know, release stuff and do videos and, and uh, um, you know, stay in touch with the, our followers and fans. Uh, even though we can't play live, we can always 
try to entertain them in, in different ways. And that's both with the Nightfight Orchestra and Soul Work that we, I mean, since we can't go on tour, we, we might as well just keep creating because who knows how long this will last. And that's no use sitting around wait for miracles to happen when you can have fun and, and uh, you know, do stuff. That's that's absolutely true. Um, so the first of the singles that are also on on the EP um, that was a feverish and that was released uh, a year ago already. So um, before this whole thing went down, um, what what was the plan back then? What, did you already have the plan of this like this single feverish trilogy and? Uh, or did it just develop uh, step by step? Yeah, it, 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 it developed very much in an, in an organic um, kind of way. Um, I, uh, after releasing the last album, uh, we, um, we had a lot of fun doing that and I felt that we had a good thing going and it, I mean, it would be a shame to, to not release anything uh, for a couple of years. So, so um, I had the idea of doing a couple of standalone singles with uh, accompanying videos. So I, I wrote Feverish and kind of like, it felt kind of fresh and, and slightly different. And, and, um, and our, then I wrote Desperado and Death Diviner and we had a, like a small session recording those songs. And I, I, um, we came up with the idea for the videos and developed them with our video director uh, Rene Valdes, and, and uh, so that was the start of the whole feverish Trinity thing. And, and um, the idea was to just have a you know a common theme and, and um, a kind of a, a some sort of storyline going through the whole thing. And then <clears throat> then the pandemic happened, and, and um, um, all our summer festivals were cancelled, so I just felt that this was the perfect opportunity to finally um, write and record um, that epic song I've been thinking about doing for quite a few years now. Um, and of course, that's, I mean, the whole uh, pandemic thing. Of course, it's it's like filtered down, and 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 uh, you know affected the the whole direction and lyrically and and um, so I guess it it became sort of like a a, um, a cohesive theme like before and after and and um, you know this some sort of storyline and an overall message in it that's kind of hard to describe but but um, no. You know, it's everyone can interpret it how they want to. Uh, yeah, b between those uh, three singles and a wisp of the Atlantic, there's the latest single, so to speak, the nothingness and the devil, and that's also um, a track that, for me, sonically a little bit w was a bridge between the singles now and then the epic that is gonna be on the EP that uh, you guys out there will uh, be hearing uh, tomorrow hopefully um, as it has this uh, super beautiful Pink Floyd like ending and I'm every time I'm listening to the EP actually I'm not I'm not sure if the if uh, the 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 order of the tracks uh, that I have here on my promo download is uh, Correct, because it starts with a wisp of the Atlantic, then it's the three feverish singles, and then the nothingness and the devil. Is that the correct track order? No, <clears throat> I mean it. It, it actually should be the the um, a wisp of the Atlantic should uh, should actually be the the um, final song. But at the same time, when we release the EP, it's going to be the first, you know, the one song on there that hasn't been released. So then the the label wanted to put it first and that's fine with me i mean you can you can always watch the videos in the right order or or um, you know um just um, do, do your own <laughs> playlist <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> on spotify where uh going back to the nothing and ness and the devil and this way i listened to it now the last uh couple of days since i got the the promo um i'm 
I always lose myself in 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 that outro of the nothingness and the devil. I'm like I'm like, damn! I want a whole album sounding like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it would be lovely to do that kind of thing. I mean, I'm I really I'm really fond of you know I really love playing slide guitar and that whole it gives everything this whole dreamy character and and. Um, <clears throat> And I think that's something that's a bit unique for us. I mean, as a metal band, you don't really hear a lot of slide guitar on metal albums. But if you listen to all the albums we've done since I joined the band for The Living Infinite back in 2012, there's quite a few slide guitars on there. So, um, of course, I mean, that whole Pink Floyd um, dreamy stuff it's it's uh, always something i loved and then it's nice to go from this like very energetic metal song into that dreamy outro yeah so in, in a way it works as uh, it works perfectly as well as a as the ep closer so to speak um but also a wisp of the atlantic of course has has a mellower ending uh speaking about the instrumentation i mean looking or listening to the to the big epic title track there is um a little bit more going on than usual there's there's some kind of jazz trumpet there uh you who who played it <laughs> oh so a friend of a friend who who was just passing through town he's a great um trumpet player so we just hired him to do some ad lib stuff um and i think it's uh it's actually a flugelhorn Ah yeah, um, sure. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I think it's it's uh, it's really nice. It's a nice little um, adds uh, also a kind of a different flavor, which you don't really hear often on on, on metal um, productions. Yeah, yeah. W one thing I just uh, just remembered when when you were talking uh, about slide guitar a second ago. Um, slide guitar in metal, particularly, there's uh, I immediately was reminded of uh, a Swedish guitar colleague of yours. It's uh, Marcus Yidel from Avatarium, who also mm. does nice uh, slide stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really good. Um, but I think as as well as for the for the last albums, as also on the new uh, EP, you did more than just play the guitar and the uh, and the and and do the songwriting i mean you're also um responsible for for the bass on the recordings right yeah um on on the last album back yet and i i played all the bass um i played all the bass on the the feverish trinity tracks and but for for the nothingness and devil and, and the, um, a wisp of the atlantic we brought in a good friend uh, Rasmus uh, Ernborn, who's also like the live bassist for soil work, and he's a really good bassist, and he also plays uh, fretless bass. So there's um, a lot of fretless bass, um, especially on the Wisp of the Atlantic, and it's also a, a really nice sound. Um, so I thought it was, I mean, that's also something you don't hear very often on, on metal records, except for like Steve Giorgio from, from Death Testament, and Testament. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, this 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 tiny little bass solo of sorts uh, towards the end of A Wisp of the Atlantic, uh, it's just, yeah, it's it's marvelous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's a fantastic player and um, a really good friend, so it's really fun that he could um, contribute, contribute tribute as well. Um, yeah. So, so how was the the recording um, process? I mean, we all know in Sweden it was a little bit different. You you guys didn't have these strict um, lockdown rules and any anything. Did you did you all meet in in the studio or did everyone record their stuff alone at home? Um, no, no, we were all in the studio uh, except for um, um, Sylvain. Uh, the other guitar player, um, he wasn't really able to come. Um, so I, I've done all the guitars on this EP. But um, otherwise, we were all in the studio together. And so it's a very much a 
a joint effort. It's really fun with, I mean, Bastian as a drummer is, is really creative and, and, you know, usually when you record metal albums, you have a, like a formula, like if you play the, you record drums first and then you just, you just add tons and tons of rhythm guitars with the same sound and then you, you know, it's very formulaic, whereas with the, with the Thomas Fleck Johansson, our, our producer, um, um, and, and uh, or core producer and engineer, it's he's a really good friend of mine, and he's a total guitar guitar geek, and, and has he has a great amp collection. So we experiment a lot with different guitar sounds and try to like make every you know between uh, not just just doubling everything. To the point where it's just a wall of sound. We want to like bring out the, the wood and the strings and the room with guitar sound and, and change it around a bit. So it's you know not necessarily that heavily distorted, more like slightly cleaner than your average smell album, and then just make it a bit more organic sounding. Like you want it to sound like an actual band playing in a room together. Yeah, that, that that also um ties in with the um yeah with the with the um songwriting uh decision to go for some more mellow and organic parts in contrast to the still present uh extremer parts, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um yeah, apart th this is uh, as you mentioned, you are not only with Soilwork, but you're also with the Night Flight Orchestra, obviously. <laughs> and uh, so, um, the Wisp of the Atlantic EP is not your first release this year. Actually, earlier this year, you released a new Night Flight Orchestra, uh, orchestra album as well, Aromantic. How is the um, Reception being for you, how it was released end of February, I think. Yeah, no, it's it's been really good. I mean, we went we went on on a European tour um, uh, quite soon after the release. Uh, we managed to play like eleven dates, and then the whole pandemic thing happened, so we had to cut the tour short, and because the border starting started closing down, and um, so we had to fly home, and and. Um, most of us got sick with Corona once we got home. Um, wow. So, so it was um, sort of like an anti-climax, but the first, those first 11 dates that we managed to actually play were fantastic. And, and um, um, we've released um, another single a couple of months ago and we have another single on the way and we're almost finished with our next album, which hopefully will come out sometime during the spring of 2021 oh, so wow. we're keeping busy yeah wow, they're really productive so the the single the the one single that's out already and the and the next single uh they are gonna end up on the album that's planned for the spring no they're more like standalone they're singles. okay okay yeah and uh yeah this is also a, a very interesting topic i think as we're in the modern age of streaming and all and uh yeah i guess a lot of attention span like the album attention span uh, is getting lost more and more uh what are your thoughts on yeah releasing standalone singles compared to releasing full-length albums and everything um well i think we're, we're um with both bands, I think we're still going to continue to do both. Um, it's really kind of liberating to be able to do standalone singles uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, just to keep up your presence. But at the same time, most of us are in the band, or in both bands, are we're, in, we're at the age where we've grown up with full-length albums and that's... I mean, there's a special magic about <laughs> releasing an album. Um, even if most people, or a lot of people, don't listen to albums the way we did when we were up, but it's still sort of like an album is a bit of a statement. Um, 
and and so so it's I'm, I'm thinking that it's nice to release singles for people who 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 are more like you know casual music lovers that like to have a nice song to add to the playlist mm -hmm. and then i know we have fans who really really like to to dig a bit deeper into what we do and, and really enjoy having the full you know experience of listening through a whole album so so um, um i think it's we're we're still going to really be releasing full length albums um right now but i mean who knows i mean i, I guess the 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 future of, of music is probably that we you can't just really get, get away with just releasing music anymore people need more than just music people need they need content they need videos they need like you know we want to create this whole micro cosmos for people that if you want to want to really uh, experience stuff what the stuff we do on, on different levels there should be like lots of content lots of um, thought-provoking details or, or uh, you know um, interesting themes behind it uh, and and uh, and if you want to just you know add your favorite songs to a playlist and, and listen to those songs and have a beer and <laughs> enjoy life that should be a possibility too but i think the, the whole you know consumption of media is changing and, and um and i think i mean it's it's not a good thing or a bad thing it's just an inevitable thing yeah that we, we can't really do anything about um we need, just need to just like with a pandemic you just need to adjust and, and accept that Thing, things are the way they are and and, um, um, and just make the most out of it and with the resources you have. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna go back to the topic of uh, playlists in a second. Um, you were just mentioning also the, the visual aspect with, with the videos again. So there's the four videos, of course, of the singles. Are you gonna put out a video for A Wisp of the Atlantic, the 15, 60 minute title track as well? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, awesome. I, I can't wait. I, uh, really, uh, yeah, it's it's a great um, yeah, supplement, as you said, uh, to and, and adds uh, a lot of uh, uh, depth and, and just more creative content uh, to it. So yeah. I, I really can't wait to see that. Um, yeah, finally, uh, furthermore, after the release of um, A Wisp of the Atlantic, uh, do you guys already have some ideas what you are going to do next now, specifically uh, uh, with, with soil work, as we already touched on the plans of the Night Flight Orchestra? Uh, yeah, we, we've... Um... We're starting to record a new album in January. Great news. Um, so hopefully we'll have a new sort of work album out sometime after the summer. And um, I mean, I've written uh, a few songs and it feels good so far. Um, it's like always, it's going to be slightly different, but uh, hopefully no one will be disappointed. It's going to have all the usual elements plus a few new elements as always maybe a few more pink floyd <laughs> passages oh uh, okay <laughs> yes yes actually um uh there there will be a few of those too but it's also going to be a lot of extreme stuff and, and you know everything in between sounds amazing i can't wait but for now we we'll have to do with the uh a Wisp of the Atlantic EP, which is already a lot to digest, as there's a lot going on in this, um, yeah, half an hour, almost. No, it's... Uh, uh, yeah, it's more, it's like 38 th minutes. 30, so, uh, other people uh, release 30-minute albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, we could call it an album, but somehow it just felt right to call it an EP, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was... Yeah. Um, 
it just became an EP. But yeah, it's like ten minutes longer than Rain and Blood by Slayer. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, we have a little tradition here at the Prog Cast, and that is that we like to end our interviews with a little section that we call What's in Your Walkman? So I would like to ask you what you've been listening to, if there's anything you want to recommend to your fans and to our listeners. Um, <laughs> well, um, I've actually been... Um, <laughs> Um, listening a lot to um, uh, modern pop disco for the past couple of weeks. Um, okay. So, so I'm really liking the new Kylie Minogue album, Disco. <laughs> okay. And the new album by Jesse Ware, What's Your Pleasure. Uh, I've been listening a lot to to uh, Kvel Attack, uh, the Nor Norwegian band, their latest album, Splid. Yeah. And... Um, uh, necrophobic, the Swedish black death metal band. They're uh, not their last album, but the album before that, Mark of the Necrogram. It's really great. Um, I've been listening to a bit of Pat Metheny, um, especially his like, Pat Metheny group, um, live stuff from the 80s. Actually, I, um, I I um I listened to to the to the newest uh, Pat Metheny album like a week ago or something or or, or two weeks yeah. ago, and there's also a, an amazing epic 16 minute track on it, and it after 10 minutes it just goes into a, an entirely new direction. I didn't uh, anticipate at all. I will definitely go back to that as well, and uh, so yeah, that's that's also definitely a recommendation from my. Side. Oh, super! Yeah, he's he's got. I mean, I've always loved him. He's he's got a huge like catalog, so it's it's um, um, uh, you know, there's always new stuff to discover in there. But I would definitely have a listen to that. Yeah, um, I have three little entries for the "What's in Your Walkman" section today. Um, when I was listening a little bit through the. Um, so I worked discography in the last week to prepare for this interview there. I think I w it was, I was actually listening to, um, the living infinite. Yeah. And there was, there was a song or, or a part that reminded me a lot of, uh, the Australians chaos divine who have not, they have a new album out as well this year. And my favorite song on the album is called Dead Rivers Flow. Yeah. And um, then for me, kind of tied with Soyberg, as I saw uh, the the uh, co-headline tour, um, are the Finnish uh, Amorphis. <laughs> so yeah, this kind of, uh, these two bands kind of go, go along hand in hand for me and uh, on their last album there is one particular track i love very much which was the last uh, official song i think on the album there's some bonus tracks as well pyres on the coast mm. i really love that one and finally something also more electronic overall but it has a soil work connection and that is uh, uh sylvain uh, the other guitar player who plays also guitar on this epic track from uh, synthwave artist Volcor X. This is our planet now. Also, a dope 2020 record to check out if you like okay. these, uh, these uh, synth uh, wave stuff. Um, Super. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, David, for being on the show or for being on the broadcast, for taking the time. All the best for the release of A Wisp of the Atlantic on December 4th. And yeah, looking forward to new stuff from both Soilwork and um, the Night Flight Orchestra. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, for our listeners, as always, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones and listen to great music. The Progcast is a production of Stuus Media and is presented by the Prog Space. It is produced by Randy M. Salo, Janine Stengel Lewis, Blake Lewis, and Dario Albrecht. Our theme music is by This Is Not an Elephant, 
and Van Kirsch does our graphics. New episodes of the podcast drop every Monday and Thursday. And don't miss our Friday Top 5 episode where we discuss our favorite new releases from that week. For more interviews and reviews in the written form, check out theprogspace.com.